Hello all, today I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to talk about Fitna, global war in the Middle East, uh, and this is uh, designed by Pierre Rezo, probably mispronounced that and apologize, and it is published by Nuts Publishing, and I've done an unboxing of this, uh, but I haven't done any gameplay on this, and I thought I would play a game of this, uh, and based on current world events, um, I decided that the scenario that I was going to play. Uh, what's different about this is I'm probably, this isn't going to be an after action or uh, in game play or a, a step by step update. I'm, I'm just, this video is really just going to be the setup and talk about the setup and I'll talk a little bit about gameplay. Uh, but I need to get into this and so I'm probably not going to have time to get a game under my belt in order to show you all the set all the uh, update segments or the after action until much later so this might be on my table for a while but I thought I'd at least share the setup because based on the current uh, world events um, you know uh, this is kind of timely so the scenario I picked uh, and you have this whole scenario book here that has uh, 11 scenarios in it uh, the scenario I picked was uh, uh, Chashal versus Hezbollah, Israel attacks Lebanon and Syria. So this is for two players. I'm going to play this two-handed. Um, there's not a solitaire AI in this game, so I'll just play this two-handed. Uh, the duration is six turns. Uh, basically here, following the U.S. withdrawal from Syria and growing tension between Israel and Iran, uh, or Iran, uh, the Israeli Prime Minister, ignoring American, European, and Russian warnings, decides to attack Lebanon and Syria in an attempt to eradicate Hezbollah uh, and to reduce the influence of Iran in both countries. Israel's surprise attack brings about direct military competition with Iran. The United States, Russia, and Western countries, Europe at their head, frustrated at not having been heeded by the Israelis, decide not to intervene at first and to let the Israeli government be responsible for its actions. Turkey and Arab countries watch from a distance, hoping for a defeat of both Israel and Iran. The scenario is ideal for tournament play. All right, so there's some special rules here. You're not going to have uh, international tension, but the caveats still apply. And the caveats basically are like rules of engagement. You know, we don't want to invoke Article 5, so... Russia can't attack uh, Israel unless um, um, uh, unless they are uh, well. They can't attack Israel inside uh, Israel or inside these su southern hexes like uh, uh, Haifa and uh, Net Net Netanya. Um, they can attack them outside that. Uh, the world powers like United States and Russia can't attack each other. There's certain caveats like that, that that are in play in all the games, but they're especially in play here because of the potential of uh, outside actors coming into play in this theater. Uh, there's also a bunch of cards that you're going to pull out. You have an event deck and an asset deck, and it tells you the cards, the, the, the number of the cards that you got to pull out. So there's several of the asset cards you got to pull from the deck and then several of the uh, event cards that you pull from the deck. So you create a deck of cards, and this game very much, and here they are here, this game very much is a uh, card-driven game because the cards that you're going to use, these are some of the ones I pulled out, is going to give you uh, operation points, and that allows you to move units and to uh, uh, start offensives, you know, to have combat, initiate offenses, offensives. Um, and they also have some events and actions as well. These are assets, and they have some special things they do, but you can always play it for the ops points. Uh, events, of course, you can play for the events, or you play for the op points as well. So um, so very much card-driven. You're going to draw two, uh, four cards a turn. You can decide which deck to pull from. Uh, you can go two and two, three and one, or whatever you, you uh, from each of the different decks. Uh, the events, of course, are going to have events, and the assets are going to have like special abilities and stuff that you might want to use in your offensives. Um, so I've set up the board here uh, already for this scenario. There's a, an extensive setup 
on the second page there, as you can see, basically the Israelis are going to be controlling the Israelis and possibly the free Syrian army if it comes into play and the U.S. if they come into play, but those aren't guaranteed. Uh, U.S. really only come in play is if, Israel, if someone gets into these lower uh, areas here uh, and then the U.S. will come into Israel's aid. The, um, uh, the uh, Irano-Syrian player controls the Lebanese army, the Hezbollah, the Syrian army, the uh, Iranian army, and the Shia militia. Uh, militias, the plus an Iranian joker and the Iranian and Hezbollah special jokers. And then and there's where everybody lays out. Um, jokers, these are, this is a card uh, chit that you have. You play that and you are, you're able to draw two cards at any time. You can play this at any time, but once you play it, it's gone. But it gets you some more cards in your hand. Again, this is kind of a card-driven game. And then uh, the special joker uh, for the Israelis, it, you just read the effects. And it's a, it's a special joker. It's a special card that you can play. The uh, Iranians and the Hezbollah, they have, or the, that player has two special jokers, one for uh, the Iranians and one for the Hezbollah. And so you, they have two special cards. Plus they have a joker as well, a joker counter or chit uh, as well. Um, you're also going to have, there's some Kurds that start off on the board, but they are kind of a, a, a third party, uh, either side, I think can, can activate them. You also have ISIS, uh, way up at the top there. Let's go up there. There's ISIS off the board right there, and they can be activated and put into their areas where they have, uh, symbols. Uh, they're really not, uh, they're not an active party and they, especially, they, they, they made ISIS, ISIS especially uh, uh, kind of a third party uh, or non-player uh, unit or faction, you know, for ethical reasons is what they said in the book. Nobody wants to be playing ISIS. Um, there, the victory conditions for the uh, Syrian and uh, the Lebanon player it, it, part of the victory condition is to, you know, remove so many ISIS units. So that's something that could come into play. They might actually activate them, put them in play so they can take them out. Um, let's, let's look at the victory conditions here for the different sides. For the, uh, let's see, for this is, oh, sorry, it's over here. So for um, the Israeli, they have to achieve... Uh, three of the following and they get a minor victory four they get a major and five they get a decisive victory uh, of these different uh, contingencies control the following four spaces control beirut or damascus eliminate the five lebanese hezbollah units so that's one two three there's three of their options they can uh, eject all iranian units from lebanon or eject all uh, Iranian units from Syria. So those are their different options. They got to control at least three and at, at best five of those. The uh, Irano Syrian player needs to, uh, same thing, three, four, or five of the following for the different levels of victory. Eject all Israelis from Lebanon, eject all Israelis from Syria, control an unbroken line of spaces controlled by, Iran, uh, by Iranians or Syrian units connecting al Qam or uh, Sinjar to Beirut, control the four PYD spaces, those are the Kurd spaces, uh, eliminate all ISIS units and Sun Sunni and Al-Sham militias present in Lebanon and Syria. So those are the victory conditions that you have here. Um, there's a potential, Russia does start off on the board, but uh, they have some reinforcements that will, here they are, down here will come in down here. So set up, as you can see, uh, there's some, you know, Kurdish forces in here, but this is really stacked right here. This is where all the action's at. As you can see this, there's not hexes on this board. It's all point to point. Uh, when you do an offensive, you can activate three units. That's the stacking limit, except for ISIS, they can have four units in an area. Um, and you, you activate your three units and then you do an attack and it's, you know, traditional, kind of it's not really a, an odds uh chart or co uh, combat resolution table 
but a comparison. So if you have five more uh, attack over the other side's defense, then you'll be you'll roll on this column. And there's certain shifts. There are uh, in, 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 uh, entrenchments that give you shifts. There are certain hexes or spaces, I should say, that give you shifts. Uh, so there's certain things in the game that might give you column shifts, you know, for for your abilities. The cards might do that as well, I believe. So combat is really not that complicated. You have your results, you have your typical retreats and um, exchanges, but also you you'll lose steps. It very much is a step game. Uh, you'll start off on one side, and if you lose a step, then you will be reduced and if you hit get hit again you'll lose it again this happens to be uh, an airborne unit so there are special rules on moving f f from one area to another based on airborne attacks but you have your attack and your defense and the third is usually movement in that some units have a red symbol which means that they can exploit their movement afterwards um, on there and that's pretty much it i mean it's not that complicated of the game um, and as I said, I pulled this out because of current events that are going on. And so I'll be posting that. Uh, hopefully I get posted this week. I'm jumbling my schedule around a little bit uh, just to fit this in. So this is just the setup. I will, um, I don't know when I'll be able to finish playing this, uh, but I'll post the, the after action as soon as I do and then refer back to this video if you want to see the setup but um interesting game uh the layout looks interesting I, I have to say i really do like the counters there's nice thickness there's a good clearness and quality to it i just i like the thicker counters uh, and the larger counters that fill up a whole space on the board so anyway um so i'm i'm interested in getting into this i don't know how well this actually models real world events and what's going on today but you know some of the stuff in this game uh is kind of going on today uh so anyway that that's there you have it if you uh, have played this game and have some comments feel free to chime in here uh this isn't meant to be like an open format forum on world events and what's going on i just thought this would be an interesting exercise to see how this game simulates events in the hypothetical that mirror in some respects, not a lot, but mirror some respects of some of the stuff that is going on currently. So uh, so if you do post any comments, post comments about the game, uh, what you think about it, if you played it or anything you're interested in, just keep it civil. Uh, thanks all for stopping by. And uh, yeah, this is my first just solo setup <laughs> video as opposed to a full after action, but uh, I'm just not going to be able to get the time to get this all the way through, and I thought I would get this out there uh, as I got it set up. Anyway, thanks all. Take care. Thanks for watching.